And we are back. It is the Wild Times big episode 30. This is big stuff, guys. Oh, yeah. Can you believe we've been doing this for 30 straight weeks? That means we have no lives. This is what we do with our weeks now. Oh, the whole man, week. I spent is, the whole week preparing yeah. for this. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's, is, that, is that why it's so hard to get a hold of you? Because you're still furiously preparing and then you have nothing, he's, like nothing to show for it? Where's all the preparation work going? He's deep in research. He's coming up with jokes oh, and okay. puns. But the, like, let's not uh-huh, talk about uh-huh. that. Let's introduce the cast. If you're, if you're tuning in for the first time at episode 30, you're a fucking idiot. Like you missed 29 oh. incredible shows. Time to just start over, go back to episode one, catch up. You could probably do it in a week if you really set your mind to it. I mean, what else do you have going on? It's the holidays. You know, what are you going to hang out with your family? Yeah. Um, no. no. So uh, I am your host, <laughs> Forrest Galante, um, joined by our two lovely co hosts, the producer and the professor, Mr. Patrick and Mr. Peter. What's up, guys? Hey, hey. Well, what's up? I mean, look at Peter's head. Look at right yeah. at the top of Let's his head. Let's get into that. What for are you guys a talking about? Yeah, that's um what? So here's what I said right before you hopped on the call, Patrick, and it was just Peter and I getting ready. I said, you know what? I actually and I, and I mean this, I actually think it's a pretty good look on him. Yeah, it does look good. It looks it at least looks like he's trying. It looks like he's trying mm, for something. Trying. Well, here's here's, well, here's I mean, my, maybe that's the flannel. Here's my but. assessment. It's like he doesn't just look like a hipster douchebag. He kind of looks like hmm. a guy with a top knot that might know jujitsu and kill you, which is a good yep. look for him because right. usually he's very soft looking. Yes, man. Listen, I may look soft and doughy, <laughs> but I was looking at your head and my head compared to Pat's head on the last uh, video podcast edit. And Pat's head is either we have giant heads or he has a tiny head. I'm not. I'm not quite sure, but no, his head I, is very uh, I unproportional actually think to you ours. You and I have way too large heads, Peter. I don't think Patrick's. Head, <laughs> do, I think Patrick do has you both have head. freakish heads? It's like, do you I do you so. I struggle to find I hats? Think so. Here, My, here's the thing, though. <laughs> by like the law of averages, hats. he's the weirdo. Because anybody that's not listening to this, yeah. that's just tuned in, is like, ugh, Patrick's head is disgusting. Like, is that a mouse's head on a human's body? <laughs> when they look at us, they're like, oh, that's the normal body. size of a head. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's funny. I think my head actually skews like 10% bigger than average. So that might mean that you guys really? are like legitimately freaks. Or or nah. that maybe I was sitting a little farther away from my camera. <laughs> the That's mo- the other the, thing. The, yeah, maybe. The very logical nah, explanation. Nah. <laughs> right. Could be that. Yeah. You had... I, I did like to, uh, you know, because I notice all these little things because I'm looking at the video much more intently than you two. Pat's... I don't know if you were doing it intentionally, but your bicep was just taking the spotlight mm. in your in your it's, camera. You know it was why? Like, it's because it was of like the way here. That, oh god! It's because yeah. of the way that I sit when I'm sitting at my dining room table. I kind of like lean forward because I don't have like a cool mic stand like you guys. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, I'm holding mine like Bob Barker because I got kicked out of the downstairs <laughs> tonight. So I'm I'm sitting on my bedroom floor. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, I'm moving to a new house on November 1st, and I'm and there's a proper Ooh. office. I'm going to have a nice setup. I'm going to have my mic on a oh, stand. Oh, nice. No longer going to have to use this thing. Uh, so you're, it's just you're, going to be much done, more dude. pro. I know you like you were searching for places. You listed your place. Like you're you're done. You're locked in. You found a new spot. You're moving. That's it. Moving. That's exciting. Moving in like a week, dude. That's I mean, exciting. I don't even know what today's so, date is, but yeah. it's coming up. <laughs> haven't even started you, packing. We haven't even started talking about packing yet. Great. I like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember, though, you were stressed and you didn't think you were going to be able to sell the house uh, right away, but it sold like immediately, did it? Like, right? Five days or yeah, some shit? Just a few days. So, dude, so competitive in LA. You put up a place, like, people are throwing suitcases of cash at you. Yep. It's sort crazy. Yeah. Any good place. Dude, so, well, Forrest, how was, uh, how was your trip to Mexico, man? Uh, good, man. Really good. It was, uh, it was brief. Um, you know, it was a, it was a week, uh, it was a week, but bomb down, uh, picked up the guys. You guys are like this. Um, so my buddies, we all, you all went to college together and now we're all scattered all over the country. Right. So everybody flew into San Diego airport and landed at like whatever it was, 11 AM. And I rolled yeah. up with my truck cause I was, we're driving, we took my truck. Um, and I rolled up in my truck 
and I put on Hit Me Baby One More Time by Britney Spears, rolled down all the windows, turned it up to like volume 35, which is as high as it goes with a pretty good sound system, put a pink bandana on and went and just leaned up against the hood. And so when they nice. they walked out like, you know, like all jacked up with their spear guns and shit, I was just like sitting there with with Britney Spears blaring like oh, nice. this is what we're and they were just all like, oh, fuck, we got to get in this car. And I just I just wore it. I just wore oh, it God. super hard. Security was looking at me funny. And I was just like, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> did you? Uh, I like it. I think that's a good move. Did you? Did you get anything? Did you spear any uh, any good fish? Any set any records? Uh, no records, but yeah, we we did great, man. A lot of nice yellowtail, a lot of cabrilla, leopard grouper. Brought a bunch of fish home. Um, it was class. Yeah, it was a beautiful trip. Weather was great. Water was nice. I love Baja, man. I could just live down there if I didn't have to have a real job and be an adult. I think I would just live in Baja on the ocean with a little Dude, fishing it's, boat. It's a legit option, like. Uh, San Jose del Cabo, not Cabo San Lucas, where mm-hmm. all the bros go to party. Yep. Uh, like 20 minutes from there, there's San Jose, which is like a weird oasis, jungle, lush, but it's still got beach. I love easily, it. Easily, easily could live there. A hundred percent. I mean, totally. it's fucking great. I'm, I'm with you. Everything's yeah. cheap. Beers flow freely. It's just, God, it's a great place. Dude, vibes are astronomical. Everyone's stoked all the time. So true. Yeah. So true. It's, it's funny because when I came out to L.A., I visited, it was like 2008 or something, and I felt the same way about L.A. And then I moved here, and then I realized that it's a shithole yeah. shortly can, after. Can you and imagine? That, like, it's the Sorry. same as any other city, you know, with like just a bunch of busy fucking people who don't give a shit about you running around. It's because I went to the beach and didn't go into the actual <laughs> fucking city where you'll be living. Peter, can you, so dumb, and Patrick, young. can you imagine... The Los Angeles Valley, like when it was first settled, when it was a town of like 300 people and there was literally salmon running in the million up the Los Angeles River. There were tule elk and deer and bear everywhere. It was perfect climate all the time. Their white sea bass and tuna, bluefin tuna, were so thick off the coast that old spotter planes used to think that they were moving mats of vegetation because the fish were so packed. I mean, it would have been an absolute like oasis paradise out here when it was when los mm-hmm. angeles like perfect weather incredible beaches tons of wildlife the the salmon run nobody knows this but the salmon and steelhead that used to run up the los angeles river like i said in the millions like imagine alaska in downtown la you know millions of salmon moving up and down the rivers the but- catalina island right i mean god oh, that, yeah this place would have been yeah. heaven and mm-hmm. now it's and basically in a desert too sidewalk like what <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. legit saw a hobo shitting on the sidewalk just like hobo. Uh, no joke two days ago. No joke. <laughs> I don't know if hobo is a real word. <laughs> hobo. Uh, whatever. <laughs> it was hobo. It was until 1920 and then people stopped using it. Yeah, I'm bringing hobo. it back. I am bringing it back. Anyway. Um, what are you going to do? Fresh off your trip from, from uh, I mean, you know, I've just been studying up for this podcast, but... <laughs> Just reading producer Will show. I'm down. planning on uh, just all night, right? We're, this is a marathon. We're going till tomorrow. For sure. I got a full 12 pack of Rolling Rock. What I'm ready to go, gents. Dude, I have no booze in my house. It's devastating. I went to like make a drink. I was like, get off. You're fired. Yeah, You're off, off the podcast. The, get off the pod. I'm so mad. What the fuck? I'm so mad at myself. What a, I listened, what a fail. I listened to like 15 minutes of our last podcast and shut it off. I was like, ugh. We are so low energy no. without booze. I did. Don't get me wrong. Chemistry is still there. But without like oh, yeah. revving each yeah. other up and drinking the whole time, it's just like, hey, man, what are you doing? I don't know. What are you up to? I don't know. It's, just, yeah, I know. it's not what it's like, dude. Every, <laughs> it's not. I've gotten, not I've gotten all bad. the feedback. Yeah. And I was definitely thinking that. But then people were like, that was great. Loved it. Fucking, you know. Dude, so, Except that I looked like I had a stick up my ass is what I was yeah, told. Yeah, you did. You looked like you were sitting on a fat dick. Yeah, you were, yeah, though, let's be honest. It was terrible. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. Dude, so, it was a big deal. Someone hit me up, and they just they, they hit me on my Instagram stories like six different times with just the line that, no pollution here, everybody happy. From yeah, last <laughs> dude, that was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, everybody yeah. happy was was pretty good. No pollution here. Everybody happy. <laughs> Thanks, China. Uh, Thanks, China. <laughs> well, dude, so oh, this yeah. is a fucking great week to do a podcast about wildlife and uh, the outdoors because there's a ton of shit going on. There's so much good stuff, man. Rad. I feel like 
Yeah, d- 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 take us away. Let's go. What's in the news, Patrick? Well, look, I I know that you're more excited about another story, but did you guys see this thing with this guy who's driving a supply truck through Siberia? And he's driving on a snowy highway. Dude, this is bananas. Imagine this. You're in Siberia. You're driving supplies probably to a prison. Um, Must be. You're driving down a snowy highway, and your truck breaks down. So now You're mm-hmm. now stuck in the tundra. All of a sudden, a polar bear shows up, and then within a few minutes, there's two, three, four. Now you're surrounded by ten polar bears. And this is captured on video. Uh, we'll see if producer Will can bring this up. He is surrounded by 10 polar bears in this old ass truck that are like getting on each other's shoulders, like doing piggyback rides, trying to get into the cab (laughs) for what I can only imagine was for one reason. And it wasn't to suck his dick. (laughs) My dog is just shredding stuff in the office. Um, (laughs) Dude, look at that thing climbing into the truck. It's like it's it's like if you're really oh really hungry is... and have like a jar of pickles that won't open, and you're just like, I need to get into it's, these pickles, dude, and it's always pickles. It's always, it's always pickles. pickles. Yeah. That's the one thing that tests your manhood. Dude, he's full. Off, uh, he's full off the ground. He's got both feet on the wheels. This bear. This is. I mean, more intense than trying to open pickles. This is like... Yeah, well, the guy's <laughs> this the is fucking crazy. pickle, dude. The guy sitting yeah. inside is, is the fucking terrified pickle. Like, uh, and by the way, his pickle. truck doesn't have half of what a pickle jar has to offer. It does, there's no way. No. But dude, I have to dude. imagine there's probably like a bit of false confidence where you're like, they can't get into my truck. And then you're like... Can they get into my truck? <laughs> I, I and then think they I keep do. trying and they keep trying and they keep trying. I mean, oh my God. And by the way, that's going to be a feeding frenzy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I'd be bears? terrified. Yeah. I really do. I, I think polar bears, I mean, we've said this before. I think gorillas are the gnarliest animals in the world. But I think as far as just like raw aggression and ability to just, well, they're, they're a carnivore. They're a predator, right? That's the difference between them and right. the gorilla. The gorilla just wants to. Like he'll just get out of his way. This guy actually wants to eat you. Like yeah. you are just insane. <laughs> he's he's starving. Yeah. So Forrest, what would you? I mean, I know it's a ridiculous question, but what would you recommend this guy do in this situation? What would you do in a situation like this? Uh, I would lay on the horn for sure. Make a lot of noise. Um, obviously, I'd be trying to get the truck started. Um, right. <laughs> but I think ultimately, I'd you know put my head between my legs and kiss my ass goodbye because this just looks oh my god this looks brutal i mean i oh you, my god the the polar bear is now on top of the him. truck he's managed he's by in, getting on the shoulders of another window. polar bear yeah no it's bonkers <laughs> I, I yeah i just <laughs> think nothing. noise is the only uh, the only thing you can do is attempt to scare them there's nothing else because they're they're locked onto that guy's smell wow. right they know he's in there they know there's a warm meal in there oh. and they're like oh i'm gonna you know see if i can get in i'm gonna keep trying to figure this mm-hmm. out it's like when a raccoon is trying to get you know in a, in a trash can or something and eventually they usually get into the trash can right so you don't want to be in that <laughs> right. situation yeah um, no, it's man. pretty, it's gnarly. That's some wild shit. Yeah. yeah. I Those are some hungry fucking polar bears too, man. Yes. Like yeah. when humans on the menu, like, you know, they're pretty fucking hungry. For sure. Cause that's, you're not their preferred, <laughs> preferred diet. Um, right. Speaking of diets, no, it's like a d- I saw, delicacy. I saw what's in the news that blew my mind. Have you guys seen these pictures of this crocodile in this Indian temple? That's a vegetarian crocodile. Yeah, how do they know I it's am. a vegetarian? Just because they know it doesn't have access to fish? I, I guess they're just feeding it vegetables, which, by the way, is 100% animal cruelty. Like, it, it's it's bonkers. Like, don't 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 do this to animals, people. If you're responsible for animals, don't feed them vegetables when they're carnivores. Like, it's just wrong. Right. By the way, Forrest, is yeah. is that noise? Is that your dog? I think so. Let me go see what he's doing. Sorry. I think what, he's shredding something is, in the office. I didn't know you guys we could just, hear. Wait, is he yep. shredding documents for you? Hey. <laughs> we just hear hear a yelp, a, sh- a gunshot and a yelp. It's all good. It's all yeah, good, guys. Yeah, yeah, man. But that polar bear shit is everybody needs to look at it. it. It's probably one of the craziest things 
I've ever seen in all 30 episodes. It's bananas. What's how, that? How, do, how do people find it through our stuff? I actually don't know the answer, Ritef. Oh, is it? Well, you can always just go to uh, the YouTube channel where it will be playing live while you listen. But I'll post a link to this specific thing because I'm so fucking, it's the craziest shit I've ever seen. The polar? Dude, what, there is. One thing yeah, I would sorry, say, I by the way, while no, we're on good. that topic is like, we have like 50 times more downloads than we have people watching on YouTube. Because, you know, we hmm. started the YouTube yeah. really late. We're yeah. all pretty yeah. ugly. True. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, we all have beards, though. But, you know, come check out the YouTube. It's fun. I mean, you're not driving yeah. to work anyway. Just just pop it on. Apple, right. Apple TV <laughs> it to your big screen and just watch us in our full glory. Yeah, as we sit here yeah. and talk at you, not with you. <laughs> nah, people like it. People like the fucking, the information that we put out along with, uh, well, they like me, hate hate you, uh, Pat, and they, they, they kind of like you for us. They seem yeah. to tolerate all of us at best. <laughs> so wait, so, yeah. so what's so interesting about this crocodile story? Because I'm not a herp, as you would say. Uh, <laughs> herp, is, herp, it that, is, it, is it that the croc is completely subsiding on veggies for 70 years? I believe so. So, okay, wow. yes, yeah, sorry, let's get back into this. So, all right, so there's this crocodile at this temple in India you know, a lot of a lot of people in the um, in India are vegetarian, right? That's huge in India. Mm-hmm. So I imagine at the temple yeah. they just decided to start fucking feeding this thing tofu and spinach or something. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> and apparently, it's been living on vegetables. It's for for a long time. But the fact that it's not incredibly malnourished is alarming. Mm-hmm. My guess would be that in the temple ponds there are fish, probably plenty of them, and the crocs just munching on them, and nobody's seeing it. Um, cause I don't believe that a crocodile could subsist mm. on any, any form of vegetarian diet. I just don't see it. And the reason I think it's so interesting is it's just, um, it's, it's just, it's just wrong. I mean, the fact that it's alive is good. You can see it's got fat reserves around its neck, around its midsection, but you just shouldn't do this. It's like, if you have a dog and this, this is going to be an unpopular opinion. Don't, I don't care how vegan or pro planet you are or any of that shit. Don't fucking feed your dog vegetables. Like you can give them some veggies, but don't make your dog vegetarian. Like it's not, it is against their biology. Like they are not made to be vegetarian. Um, and crocodiles are, are far more so like dogs are a little Mm -hmm. bit omnivorous, you know, humans, obviously omnivorous. Um, but crocs are straight up carnivores. They Mm -hmm. need meat. And this one's not eating Wait, it, which is are interesting. There, is that a thing? Like, do you, are are there some people who have made their dogs vegan? Oh yeah, that's there's like a movement for it. What? Yeah, they're this is wolves. Yoga too. The dog doing yoga as well. They're wolves. <laughs> Correct. They should not be eating nothing but vegetables. You know, and they're doing like, oh, my well, dog gets soy protein and blah blah blah. Just no, that's wrong. You will have a sickly yeah. dog. Just give it meat. It needs meat. I. W- I w- I will say this. My dog fucking loves carrots, man. And it was a, and ice, by the way. Yeah. Two great discoveries because <laughs> it's like, I still buy him like begging strips and shit, but dude, give him a carrot. It's like a toy for him that he can eat and he fucking loves it. Well, yeah. Same with ice cubes. Your dog's about the size of a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> a 12 pound carrot no look so, the do- dogs are omnivorous like my dog goes nuts for avocados that fall off of our trees but it's just a, oh yeah loves them but that. but they still need meat like their their stomach biome requires meat like it's just it's just yeah. science there's no like oh my dog is going to be better for the planet and eat veggies his whole life like you will just have a sickly weak dog which is what i'm kind of worried about for this crocodile i mean in my opinion this this animal literally is like this is animal cruelty to keep a crocodile and feed it fish but my guess is it's jumping in the jumping in the ponds and eating a ton of uh ton of fish and nobody knows it oh really mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, i, I so would guess so Ratep, what about you what, what what are you what are you excited about this week what kind of stuff well uh i am excited that i saw a chart the other day that showed um it showed the cause of bird deaths in the United States. Mm-hmm. And it was a simple bar bar graph. And at the top, as we've discussed before, uh, the cause of, of bird deaths is domestic cats. Up that was, there, I think was it was that number two, one. Oh, number it was 2.4 billion bird deaths, but even more interesting. Cause I already knew that I can't remember if it was the one right below that or the one right below that. But it was way up there, and it was birds running into glass 
birds running into glass. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And it's like the top killer of birds. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, so, I mean, are they, it's interesting because what are they just going so fast that they're not sensing what's in front of them for us? Or do they, what are they doing? How does that um, even happen? Sometimes they don't know it's there. More typical, more typically than that is, um, the birds definitely just hit it, not knowing that it's there, but more common than that is them trying to fight their own reflections. Um, you oh, see, yeah. yeah, you see this a lot with like raptors and predator predatory birds where they just go dive bombing into a window at top speed because they're trying to fight oh. their own reflection, which is, uh, yeah. Pretty silly. <laughs> well, I mean, there was a leaf blowing around on the patio today and the cat was like furiously trying to hunt it through the window and he was pissed. He was like meowing the likes of which I'd never heard. <laughs> Dude, yeah, there's this leaf. The most expensive hotel that I've ever stayed at, I was like, I'm going to treat myself to this real nice trip at this hotel in Kauai, right on the North Shore there. And uh, it's right on this cliff over the ocean. The views are amazing. Obviously, nice. if you're going to do that, you pay the extra hundred bucks a night to get the oceanfront room, whatever. And sure. uh, yeah, at like 4 p.m. every day, someone comes into the room and closes your shades. Hmm. So, and you have to keep ah. your shades closed at night because there's some sort of endangered bird there and they just keep dive bombing the windows. Huh. So they don't tell you that on Hotels.com when you, yeah. you know, book the room for 800 bucks <laughs> a night. But uh, yeah. But yeah, you have to keep the windows closed because just like hundreds of birds are smashing them every night. Huh. If they the, see the dude, light inside. Here's, on that note, here's something I was thinking about today. Isn't it weird that, uh, like, I was watching my cousin Vinny today. Of course and you were. Great. I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's great. But, uh, like, people can get away, like, a lot of people do this thing where they, where they, uh, they just omit information and the consequences of, of it are just as bad as making up a bold faced lie. It, it is but, a lie. I, okay. Sorry. Right, let me go right. on a tangent later. Go ahead. Yeah. Please continue. No, I was just going to say, but you, like, even though the consequences are the same, it's not looked at it at all the same. If you just omit, just like, it's not. if you omit some information, I, Let's hear your rant. What is it? Okay. <laughs> curious. It's now. pretty obvious where I'm going with this. But in any relationship I've ever had, I've always had this argument that when you just choose to omit information, it's the same thing as just telling a lie. If you're like, where'd right. you go last <laughs> night? And they're like, yeah, nowhere. But it was really right. somewhere. That's omitting information. <laughs> that's that's the, that is that is being. Yes, you said you said meh, whatever, or nah, nowhere. Yeah. But that is omitting information where you did go somewhere or. You know, I'm trying to think of a better example. This just makes me sound fucking needy. But my point is just, it's well, just yeah. like yeah. when you do the blatant, like, yeah, nothing. Like, you know, when you just blow it off and, and choose not to say something, that is the same thing as telling a bold faced lie. Like if you're sure. going to tell the story, you have to tell the whole story. Well, it's like, it'd be <laughs> like if you're, if you're like, who's there? And you're like, oh, you know, Todd, Jesse, Pinkman, uh, Steve, and, right. uh, and uh, you know, the professor, but like really also like three of your exes were there too. Right. But you, you left that, that out. Yeah. You've lied. Right. You've lied. hundred yeah. percent. Well, it gives you, so, so it's egregious though, but I feel like it does, it gives you a, uh, first of all, it gives you like plausible deniability because right. you we can, can be, be like, like oh, I kind of, I didn't think that was important. Like I didn't <laughs> well, tell you your, every your detail. Example, right. Your example, Patrick is egregious. Like there's no way getting out of that, like in a relation, <laughs> but if right. it, you know, if it was like something a little bit less, you could be like, Oh, I just forgot. I just forgot. That's it. It's like oh, if yeah, we I went on an extinct or a live shoot and somebody said, how'd you do? And we came back and we're like, fine. But actually we found the extinct <laughs> animal and rewrote natural history. But we just decided to not talk about that. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I just didn't think it was that a, important. That was a fabulous humble brag, dude. Real, real <laughs> nice. I loved it. Thanks. Yeah, that was, that was well executed. I've been sorry. waiting 30 episodes for that. So <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, I had another. Let's talk about the most topical thing in the news, in the wildlife oh news this week, right? <laughs> Murder yep. hornets. They're back. Oh, TMZ's yeah. interviewing me about them again. They're like, oh my God, mm. we're all going to fucking die. We're not. <laughs> um, but. Just as murder hornets are entering into their slaughter phase, right, which is where mm -hmm. uh, they they just go fucking nuts. Um, Washington State found the first nest of m murder hornets, um, which is an important development because their population has been quantified, knowing how much there are, and they caught this nest um, and they destroyed them. And they did it with a giant vacuum cleaner, which I thought was pretty cool. 
So scientists found hmm. a murder hornet net. They're like, this is good. We're like able to quantify how many murder hornets are here now based on this whole nest. Um, then slurped them up with a giant, basically a giant shop back and, and killed them all, which is great um, because that's what we want. We don't want more murder hornets in the U.S. They're an invasive species. They can cause all kinds of problems to our honeybees. Um, yeah, that's kind of the story, right? So, so how, did, how did they get here again? Uh, no one knows how they got here. They're native to Japan. Um, and, and mm-hmm. literally no one knows how they got here. So mm. I, how is, this is the first nest that they found so that people have seen them flying around or found dead ones, but they'd never actually found a nest. A full nest. That's correct. That's my understanding. I'm not positive on that, but yeah, my, my understanding is that they're, they're, they know that mortar hornets were here. They'd found several individuals, but they hadn't found a nest. And the reason being they nest underground, right? They have these massive colonies that actually take place underground. I don't know the specifics oh. of how they found this nest, but it is a good sign that they did find it. Got it. Nice. Now, let me ask you this, because we've talked about murder hornets a couple times. Yeah. How, how how scary is an actual murder hornet? Is this something like where they're killing people in Japan? Uh, they do. I think it's like six to eight people a year die from them. But, okay. you know, like that's how nothing. many? Well, I mean, that sounds like a lot and it's kind of scary, but. How many people are dying from falling into sand holes at the beach every year? I think it's like 200. I'm not kidding. It's like oh, no, a ridiculous I'm being serious. stat. Yeah, that's it's like, nothing. It's that's nothing. That's like zero. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. very little. Um, w- do you want to get stung but, by one? No, it's going to fucking suck. <laughs> like, it's going to be miserably painful. You're probably not going to die. You're probably not going to have an allergic reaction. The scariest right. thing about murder hornets is the fact that they're going to destroy our native honeybees and bees are already in the most jeopardy i mean that's that's what's scary Mm -hmm. about it once we lose the bees we lose all kinds of crops and agriculture and all kinds of stuff what the fuck are you talking about with sand holes i just googled (laughs) i was like sand i just googled sand holes at the beach and a national geographic article came up that was like don't dig sand holes at the beach it can turn into a deadly trap yes that's what i'm talking about I remember, how do I know this? I'm trying to remember. There was some analogy drawn about it and some stat published. You might be able to find this, or maybe producer Will can. There is like a ridiculous number of people that die every single year from like, you know, like we've all done it. You go to the beach, you big, dig a big hole. I don't know why. Maybe you're putting water in it. Maybe you're burying yeah, a friend. Yeah, you when know, you're a kid, you just, you just dig a hole. Yeah. <laughs> just dig a hole. That's like part of the game. Well, apparently a bunch of fucking idiots die in those holes every single year somehow. I don't know how. Um, and <laughs> yeah. this is like a I mean, thing. Like people are just dying at the beach in sand halls. <laughs> I mean, I, t- I guess it's like when I was a kid, I remember like it was a big deal. Like I feel like every other week someone was getting stuck inside a well. Right. Do you remember this right. from You're the like, 80s? Where does this yeah. happen? Yeah. <laughs> Last there, yeah. There was a baby in a well yeah. like every like <laughs> each fortnight. There was a new story about a baby in a well. <laughs> Fort- <laughs> every like, two weeks. I don't know why that was such a thing. But sand holes, no, it that's, was that's though. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Don't, the well thing is like in the psyche of, of I don't know if it's just a Mary, but it's like in every old timey book you read, somebody gets stuck in a well. It, it's Timmy's the whole stuck premise in a well. of Lassie, the movie, or in the books, or whatever. <laughs> the like people TV. fucking just yeah. getting, well, how many people are just jumping in wells, by the way? Like, that you have to make a conscious decision to get into a well. Or to leave a <laughs> well, well unless somebody uncovered. puts you in there. Yeah. These right. Are, these Just are the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Utterly preposterous. What it about, is. So, okay, so is the whole point that they found this murder hornet's nest and that now, okay, so you eradicate that one nest, but does that really solve anything or? Well, we don't really know. Um, and I, I have been home for such a little amount of time, I haven't really dug into this, but we don't know. It, I mean, that could be the population. It's probably not. Let's be realistic. But that could be it, right? There could be one nest in all of um, in all in all of Washington State. I mean, I don't think anybody really knows, but every single one that we can remove is a good thing because obviously, if you leave a hive or a nest, it's only going to expand, right? They're only going to lead to more of them. So it is sure. it is a good thing that yeah. they've managed to wipe one out. It's hopefully putting in some control. Hopefully. Mm. Yeah. Well, something came across my desk on no, a lighter didn't. note that I was. Uh, yeah, you hey, don't, you don't speaking <laughs> of lighter notes, there were Shoot. researchers in Antarctica. Did you guys hear about these penguins? 
These penguins uh, in Antarctica, have you ever heard of them? They're in I, there I, in I'm Antarctica? I'm familiar with penguins, yes. Some sort so of, please some continue. Sort of bird. So there's a with... new study that came out from the University of Copenhagen where they demonstrated that the penguins in Antarctica emit copious amounts of nitrous oxide via their feces. That's like the laughing gas that they give you at the dentist. Gets huh. you high as shit. But, so you they're, know, they're, it's so oh, funny. Sorry, it's, it's funny because they were doing this study and there was so much of this gas that, that it says the researchers went cuckoo from being surrounded by penguin poop. Oh, this, no way. This is a, I can't believe this is a new discovery. They, they didn't <laughs> know this? Like, what's going on here? We've known about penguins for fucking decades. Yeah, but uh, uh, how often are we hanging out in thousands of pounds of penguin poop? I, I, uh-huh. I don't really know the answer. So are the penguins um, like getting Joe like, exotic? Maybe are they getting high off this laughing gas of their own making? Yeah. Oh, the they penguins are, are or just, just the researchers. The penguins are the penguins getting high too? Is, it, is it, like would they would they have the ability to get fucked up off of this shit? Well, the best is I don't humans. Know. The best thing is the uh, quote from the uh, from the Dutch uh, uh, researchers. The quote is. After nosing about in guano for several hours, one goes completely <laughs> cuckoo. <laughs> cuckoo. I love it. Fucking cuckoo. Well, dude, penguins have been in the news twice this week because there was another big story uh, about two. So I don't know if you guys remember this. Um, last year, uh, there's two African penguins in a Dutch zoo that are gay. And they're a committed gay couple. And last year hmm. they made the news because they went and stole an egg from a heterosexual couple mm-hmm. and had a baby. Whoa. And they raised what? this baby, right? Well, this is that's not where the story news ends. The plot thickened <laughs> as, as it was announced either yesterday or today that these same gay male penguins went and aggressively stole a nest from a lesbian couple <laughs> penguins. <laughs> Which begs the question right now? Which yeah. begs the question, where did the lesbian couple get the eggs from? Oh. Well, no, I don't think they had I'm not sure if they had eggs. They had built like a very nice home though. Oh, they just stole the nest. nest. There were no they eggs. Stole their gotcha, nest. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Um They're Joe thieves. Joe Joe Rogan actually hit me up about this and he was like, dude, what's going on here? And uh, I'll tell tell all the brosners the same thing I told him. Gay penguins Super common. Like, this is a very well-known, very well-documented thing. Here at the Santa Barbara Zoo, uh, where I live, there's a pa- pair of gay Humboldt penguins that have been together for 15 years. Um, wow. wow. Yeah, and, and same thing. They uh, they have – so the, the at the Santa Barbara Zoo, and that's the only gay couple of penguins that I know. <laughs> they personally. have uh, a, <laughs> Personally, no. Um, they've given them eggs a few times from, you know, penguins that have had too many eggs or whatever, and they have successfully raised chicks. Um, I don't know that they've gone yeah, around probably stealing. better. They pro- they probably keep their cage very clean. They dress neat. <laughs> yeah. You know. Every stick's in the right place. They have tons of excess <laughs> finance. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Tons of excess, excess finance. Yeah. 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 They're yeah, very wealthy yeah. penguins. Um, no, but yeah, no, the gay penguin thing, it's, it, it seems topical for sure. Um, but it's, it's very well documented. It's funny that it's no, not more well known. I feel like if I happen to be like, uh, what is it? Civil, not civil rights. What, what is it when you're just like an activist for people? I don't yeah, know what that's civil, called. Civil rights. Civil rights. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If I was yeah, like a civil, civil rights, rights activist and a biologist instead of just a lowly biologist, I would definitely be referencing gay penguins constantly. I'd be like, look, <laughs> it happens in nature. Here they are. They yeah. raise perfectly successful babies. Like we should all be gay. You know, that would like be my mo if I was into both of those fields. Is there a reason nice. why it's common in penguins? To be to be homosexual, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I don't know if it was in his field well, of study. Here, here's what a thought. Do you know, here's a thought. Can you tell the difference between two penguins? Any two penguins of the same <laughs> no, species? That's, that's why Disney's movie Penguin. I was like, well, yeah, this is brilliant because these are clearly different penguins in every single shot in this every movie. Every scene, yeah. And and at no point did you question it, right? No. So maybe. I mean, yeah, you're right. So maybe a couple penguins look at each other and go, hmm, that's a nice looking black and white bird. I don't really fucking care what he's got downstairs. And that's that, you know, like it's just. Or maybe, or maybe they were just uh, cuckoo on their poo-poo and uh, nice. they don't know what's happening. 
You've been waiting a while for that, haven't you? Yeah, it's I, been, yeah. been working Years. on that. You've been wanting to do yeah. poo, poo, poo. Very good, very good. Yeah, that's uh, um, poo, poo, that's poo, poo, funny. Poo. Yeah, no, Joe, uh, Joe, Joe Rogan was definitely into the gay penguin thing. He was like, "What's going on here, man? Are they like giving him chemicals?" Love- I was like, "No, they're they're not. They're just gay penguins." <laughs> <laughs> I love that Joe Rogan's like just hitting you up now. You're his go-to guy about, you know, anything in in this, you know, like animal, probably conservation type uh, go-to shit. You know, he's got like his alien guys that he probably calls up yeah. like Bob Lazar. It's a muffler. Look at his gas sure. on Venus. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm his boy, dude. I, I fucking, I had, uh, el- I had elk steaks for dinner from Joe. Cause the last time I saw him, I brought him like a single mushroom and, one <laughs> fillet of fish and he's like here's 40 pounds of elk and I'm like, Sweet. yeah i remember that um, so you've had that elk since i was over there 30 weeks ago dude, when he we gave did the me first so one much of fucking elk like yeah it's in the freezer it's not just like sitting out but he gave me so much but yeah i did elk steaks and mushroom for dinner it was it was a treat um yeah, forest, now he's, i he's saw man. i saw yeah. you uh i saw a picture of you on instagram it, it's lobster season yeah indeed I saw you had like, so I saw you had a, a ton of lobster and I was, did you, what, what's the story with that? Did you go out and like get them or like what, what was up with that? Yeah, man. Every, uh, every year, uh, October to March, California lobster season, I, um, I hit up the islands here, uh, yeah. coastal too, and die, you night dive with a flashlight and the limit is oh, seven. Dude. Yeah. And you go out yeah. at night and, uh, you just dive around and look for lobster that aren't hiding deep in caves. And, you know, you have a little gauge to make sure they're big enough and you, uh, you collect your seven. And I went out for a three day trip a couple of weeks ago and came back with three days worth of limits worth. Um, which I is love how nonchalant you are. You're like, yeah, I just get a flashlight. I go into dark water and I hunt lobsters. Yeah. That's doesn't Dude, everybody I, do that. I, I no? love night diving, man. It's, it's <laughs> just, it's, it's fucking cool. Like the reef is a whole different place at night. Um, and yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I've tried to explain this to people that have never been in the water at night before diving. During the day, like the whole world is in your view, right? You're in the ocean. There's a fish here. There's coral here. There's kelp here. There's a crab here, and it's like it's overstimulating. Like there's so much in this foreign world. Mm. And don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. It's stunning. I love day diving. It's it's incredible. But at nighttime. Your entire field of view is your little flashlight beam, which is this big, uh, right? And you yeah, don't yeah. see anything except for where you're pointing your little flashlight. And when you're living mm-hmm. in that world at night, you see so much because wherever you, whatever you hit in that flashlight, say it's just a little tiny crab or a little nudibranch or a single patch of reef or something, it's only, you focus exactly on that one tiny spot instead of taking in all of this giant information in this ecosystem. And it's, it's pretty cool. You like... You really see a lot at night. Like I realized on this last lobster dive, I must have seen like 12 swell sharks, um, which are just these little Mm. sharks that we have here in California. They puff up and expand where they get the name swell shark from. Um, And during the day, uh, you know, not that I I look for them very often, but I very rarely ever even see a swell shark. And at this last dive, I saw like 12 of them. And I got to like really, Mm. you know, like I'd put a lobster in my bag and then I get like I always do, I get sidetracked and I go stare at the sharks and blah, 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 blah. And I would like really <laughs> yeah. look at them. Like I would shine the light right in their face, on their eye, on their skin. I, I don't know. It's pretty cool. Interesting. You get really focused. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, do California, California lobsters don't have claws, do they? Correct. They're a crayfish, California spiny okay. lobster. So no, no. And, and this is going to upset a lot of people and I'm perfectly okay with it. They do not taste nearly as good as Maine lobster. They just really? don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, like people are like California lobster is the best. Florida lobster is the best. Caribbean lobster is the best. It's not. Shut up. You're an idiot. Like, have you ever been to Maine and had a lobster roll? It's incredible. Also, I've just yeah. I- I've never heard anyone say that. Maybe because I don't like know a bunch of people that go hunt lobster. <laughs> but like, I've never been to like a seafood restaurant where they're like, ah, yeah, we got that California lobster. It's like, <laughs> yeah. no, you get Maine lobster. Because the fucking claws are delicious. Exactly. I mean, the tail's nice. Don't mm. get me wrong. But it's that claw, claw meat is just something sexy about it. So good. Um, I like lobster. Yeah. I like eating it. The texture, I think, is the reason to eat lobster. I don't think the taste is anything spectacular. I'm with you on that, man. And then I'm it's with like you a on vessel. That. It's a vessel for butter. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's the same yeah. reason I eat mushrooms. It's a butter sponge. You're just like, right. mm, uh-huh. garlic and butter in a nice chewy thing. This 100%. is delicious. Dude, yeah, I, there's a restaurant in San Diego, great seafood restaurant called Ocean Air. And uh, they, one of their things that you got to get when you go there is like, it's a little tin of like six snails uh, and there's a little mm. puff pastry on top. 
Okay. And underneath the puff pastry is a snail that takes up about a quarter of the tin, and mm-hmm. the rest of it's just full of hot melted butter. <laughs> Great. And like people are like, man, Delicious. I really like snails. I'm like, you haven't tasted any snail. It's <laughs> butter and puff pastry with a yeah. chewy morsel. Totally. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. At uh, Lucky's, the local like fancy restaurant here in Santa Barbara, it's, it's pesto. It's the same thing. It's just butter and pesto. Sure. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there might be something chewy in there. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know what it is. That's a big um, thing in Key West. They eat a lot of conch uh-huh. down yeah. there, which is like, the, like the shell you shell? listen to. Yeah. Like that's the one you listen to or you can blow into it. It's really good. Uh, yeah. But it's butter. Uh, yeah. It's, it's butter and with like a fried fritter around it. Like yeah. you don't really <laughs> taste the conch. Wait, um, conch is like there's a creature inside the conch shell that's that's called a conch. Something I, I, has to make the shell, you dumb dumb. No, I, I under, <laughs> well, I thought that was just the environment that made it. There's a conch that like creates the shell. Wait, what? Tell me about uh, the conch, dude. Yes, I need to hear. Conch this is, is conch fascinating. A giant snail. Um, <laughs> it's a giant underwater. It's a giant sea snail, and they make the shell just like land snails. They're not just part of the environment. Shells don't just show up. It's not like a rock. No, I, it's but a conch made. shell is is not like a fucking land snail shell. A conch shell is like a piece of fucking shell? a giant <laughs> ceramic fucking like uh, you know shell. centerpiece that you put on a table. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's just a conch picture how much bigger the animal is that's inside. Yeah, there's the you, animal. See its two little eyes there. Um, Will, Woof. can you pull that up all the way? If you look, if wow. you zoom oh, yeah. in, that is Hanus. Those are uh, <laughs> the two little dots that you see either side of the uh, the shalom looking cool. part there. Those are his little eyes, and he's looking right back at you. It's kind of <laughs> sad. I used to hunt conch when I'd go to the Bahamas, um, and I don't do it anymore because, like Patrick said, I mean, I'll just I'll just dip some bread and some butter. Really, <laughs> it's yeah, um, the same thing. It is. It's the same yeah. thing, and, yeah. and it just there. Their numbers are yeah. super reduced from what they should be, and they're kind of cute. They look at you with those weird little alien faces, and then you just smash their shell open and slurp them up. Yep. There's a mm. little bit of trivia. Key West is, when you're there, it's ref- they refer to themselves as the Conk Republic because uh, I guess they have a lot of conch there. They have tried twice to secede from the Union. No, they did. They did. They seceded for like seven hours or something. Oh, maybe they did. Okay. Key West did? Yeah, they, they I, wanted I, to become I, their own country. And a lot I'm of people 90, in the Keys yeah. still want to do it. It's like a thing. Yeah, I'm almost positive. I, I'd have to double check this. But my understanding was the Conk Republic for like seven or eight hours was its own nation where like the bill was passed and then overturned seven hours later just due to okay. bureauc- bureaucracy. And they're like, yes, we're the Conk Republic. And there's like <laughs> there's a flag and like, you know, there's, there's fucking toothless – Florida people with like Conquer Public pulled back <laughs> tattoos. Like it's a thing. Man. Oh yeah. Let, let, yeah. Let's not, I, I let's love, not lose all our Key, Florida listeners. I was going to say, I love Key West too, man. It I is love like, Florida. Yeah. Well, so why are they seceding? Like, so they don't want any know, rules, bro. Key, they just want okay. it to be, They're if pirates. you want to just walk full nude down the street, you can do it. <laughs> if yeah, you want to shoot I'll up pass that law bar, right now in California. Yeah. I'll vote for that. <laughs> they just want zero laws. They just yep. don't want anyone telling them what to do. And, you know, they've got a big enough economy because of the tourism and they're, you know, a cool looking island off the ocean that's in the Caribbean that yeah. they could just be their own little country. I'm for mm-hmm. it. I'm, I'm totally, totally for, for it. it. Yeah. Hey, so you mentioned yeah. that dope seafood restaurant in San Diego. I forgot you went on a baby watching mission last weekend. How was that? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was great. I mean, it was it literally went exactly great. as I predicted. Come on. It, to great. Help. It went as here. predicted, which was a <laughs> lot of time where the ladies were playing with babies and a lot of time where me and the, uh, the husband, the dad of the baby, were drinking booze, drinking wine. Uh, there you go. Was you he know. cooking? You, you, yeah. You were- oh, my God. He's, yeah, he fucking did a, like a 12-hour slow smoke on a, like a, por- a pork shoulder, did a brisket. Yeah, just, just eating meat, drinking... It's- White claw and great. Wine That's all, and all he has now, dude. It's, it, this is it's the best time he's had. Probably how old's the kid? Ten months. In eight okay. months. Ten yeah, months. Know, In months. ten months, coming over. This is the oh, best time dude, he's had. The other thing is they don't like they don't like uh, the TV to be on while the baby's up because apparently it gives the babies like uh, more of a predilection for wanting to see blue light, and it's funny mm-hmm. because. He was like, look, we're making exception because we're going to watch like college football and drink. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you could see the baby was just like enamored with the TV. Like oh, it yeah. Didn't, it didn't want to look at any, any screen. 
Didn't care about mm-hmm. the dog. Just wanted to look at the TV. Uh, it's brutal. But dude, I will say, it's man. It's crazy. Just uh, while we're on the topic of, you know, how great El- uh, California used to be. They're, they're <laughs> just north of San Diego, like 10 minutes north. And on Saturday, I was just like, I'm going to get out of the house. Just go for a run. So I just like ran down the hill, was at the bay. And then I just ran along the bay and just, I just was fucking going, man. It was like 60 degrees out. It was great. Everyone's got their, mm. there's uh, this huge island that you just run over this little bridge to. There's essentially no laws on the island. I think it's its own republic. Everyone's just got their boats <laughs> in the water. People are on the sand. Dogs, all, just full of dogs. You can't bring dogs to any beaches in LA. Uh, it was wild, yeah. dude. I was gone for like San five Diego's hours nice. by myself. It really is. <laughs> San Diego. Nice. San Diego. Yeah, I'm a big fan. It's cheaper than LA too, by by for a sure. good amount. I'd say a third cheaper. That's to get exactly like a house. Say, yeah. yeah. It's just a lot of sprawl. You know what I mean? It's like it's like one mm. town from like the border to like Escondido. It's just like it never ends. It's just but yeah, I, I do like it. Weather's great. My favorite part about San Diego is its access to Baja. It's you know it's like right you just hop right over the border. Um, yeah, that's true. Yep. So I have one other thing that I saw in the news, and even though we've got dog leg that I liked, um, and I think I'll bring it up. Uh, so I've been saying this for a while. <laughs> I'm saying this for a while. There's always like natural alternatives to things that we do to fuck things up. Right. And I think something yes. that's probably been known for thousands of years is being brought back and it's even made headlines. A bunch of farmers in Thailand found that instead of using pesticides, They employ a team of like 10,000 ducks to eat their bugs in their rice paddies, and they eat the old husks after the harvest of the rice. And this method has not only reduced the bugs, they now have ducks that are reproducing and ducks to eat and obviously keeping the duck population sustainable. And it's environmentally friendly and increases the yield because of the fertilizer from the ducks shitting all all over the thing as they go. So it's just like... You can either put pesticides down, which poison people, kill everything around, you know, is terrible for the environment, or you bring in a bunch of ducks and just make a more diverse ecosystem and get rid of this monoculture and everything wins. There's ducks to eat, there's yeah. less bugs, there's better soil quality. And and I just, I don't know, I just wanted to bring it up because it's one of these things, there's a great movie called The Biggest Little Farm. Um, if you guys have, haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, where they just show how instead of using monoculture and crop farming, um, they just use a bunch of stuff. They use ducks and chickens and crops and they cycle the crops and everything just works better. Like you don't go five yeah. years of growing one thing and then go, Oh, my soil's fucked. I got to move on. You know, you rotate, mm-hmm. you cycle your crops and you have animals running throughout the crops and let, let like nature take its course a little bit. And the yield is so much better. So anyway, I think it's pretty cool that it's What's, making news with these farmers. How much do they pay? How much do they pay the ducks? That's, <laughs> they pay them as much months. as, as much as the orangutan uh, toll booth operator that we talked about <laughs> in the previous episode. Dude, uh, I, was, no, it, I just feel oh, like wow. being, being in a rice paddy is such a, like, that was one of the things that struck me the most in Vietnam was just the rice paddies everywhere. And then when we, after you found that cobra, we started looking up uh, just statistics about cobra, cobra deaths, attacks yeah. and cobra deaths. I can't remember the exact number, but it was in the magnitudes of tens of thousands of people get, they get, they get killed because they get bit by cobras and other venomous snakes in the rice paddies. Mm -hmm. Because I guess what's the deal? The rice attracts mice and rodents and then that attracts snakes. Exactly. The grain attracts, you got it. Yeah. It's like, it sounds like it's a whole ecosystem there, you know, and, and if there's food there, they're going to keep going back and it's going to. It's going to make uh, its whole little own ecosystem there. But imagine like going think- to work every day and knowing that there's like there's like a 1% chance that today's the day I get bit by a cobra and die <laughs> at work. <laughs> yeah, 1% so that sounds low, but it's actually a lot. Husking rice. What was that for us? Say that again. So, so you, like you can make 15 cents husking rice. You know, that's yeah. the upside of the day. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty it, it is. It is kind of it's it's interesting though to see like you're talking about this uh you know what you were just talking about where you have the ducks that are basically you know a natural way better than fertilizer doing this thing where humans are benefiting the environment whereas like it's interesting because it's normally the opposite and we're so like 
our brain, like most of nature just works that way. It just goes with the vibe and the flow. Yet for some reason, like we as humans have like these complex everything set up and we fuck it up and like go against everything. You know, sometimes it's going to go with the flow. There are natural natural answers to like all of our problems and we like to fuck it up by putting synthetic stuff in it. It's, it's just wild. It's, Um, It's because it's easier and we're addicted to convenience, man. That's what it is. Blue light and convenience. So it's like, you know, it's just, it's just easier. Before we jump into the, to the other stuff. I just, there's one more thing that producer Will had put on the show doc that I found sure. fascinating, Yeah, <laughs> which is that, uh, this is not news. It's, it's olds technically, uh, <laughs> but in the summer of 1985, just cause while we're on the topic of San Diego, there was a, a famous orangutan at the San Diego <laughs> zoo whose name was Ken Allen. <laughs> it's a great he had, name. He had a first and last he's a, name. He was a businessman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. AT&T. His name was Ken, Ken Allen. And in the summer of 85, when, when, when little Peter was just knee high to a grasshopper, uh, <laughs> Ken Allen escaped his enclosure on three separate occasions. What? Um, he walked around the out. zoo and, and was friendly to all humans and animals he encountered. <laughs> um, the zoo then rigged cameras to his enclosure but he appeared to know that he was being filmed. So he would look at the cameras a lot and he didn't make any escapes. So then they took the cameras down and then he escaped again. Um, wow. So he kind of like knew he was being filmed. And so then they couldn't figure out how he was escaping. So they hired a team of rock climbers to come in to try and figure, figure out what the like finger and toe holds were that he was using. And then they had to redesign his enclosure. That's it's awesome. fucking genius, man. Ken yeah. Allen. Also, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ken Allen. It just Ken sounds Allen. like, it sounds like Ken every Allen. 1980s pseudo comedy actor. Yeah, yeah. Ken Allen. Ken Allen. Or yeah, like, Ken you Allen. know, you know the backup yeah. quarterback for the Raiders in 1986. <laughs> totally. Ken yeah. Allen. Well, guys, uh, I think it's time for a new fan favorite segment. Uh, it is called Factor Fiction. You guys want to do it? You ready to do it? You're interested in this today? Because I have yeah. some facts and some fictions that I think oh, are going to blow you. All right. Dicks. So ready? here's oh, you, you name a fact, and then Forrest and I argue about whether it's true or false. Correct. Okay. Correct. The game. Right. Let's do it. Pat always answers first because he knows nothing, and Forrest okay. actually studied biology. Okay. Definitely. Number one. Pat, mm-hmm. pay attention. I know you're watching the football game, but pay attention. It's not even on. You ready? <laughs> Manatees use their farts to help swim. Hold them in to float or let them out to sink. Is this a true fact or did I just make this bullshit up? I'm going to say, I mean, this is annoying because I could s- fiction. Uh, I don't think a manatee needs help being buoyant enough to swim. No, it's fiction. Bullshit. Okay. Full fart. I'm go the other way. I'm going to go fact, then they do indeed use air as buoyancy control. I'm sorry to say that everybody's favorite host, Patrick, oh. is wrong. <laughs> Forrest, one point for you. All right. <laughs> Lucky me. I mean, there's not much more to it. They, 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 ha- they bring air into their body, and it helps them float. They really I'll, I'll sit in it just like us. This. I'll tell you why I know the answer to this. You've all seen yeah. my physique back in yeah. the old the naked and afraid. Unfortunately, days. oh yes, yeah. seen it. The whole, for, for the whole world has seen us. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> so when I was on that naked and afraid show, I fed us very handsomely from the ocean. I brought a, a mask and snor and didn't even get a snorkel, just a mask for diving, and I fashioned a spear. And I didn't have a mm. wetsuit, and I didn't have a weight belt, and I didn't have fins. I had nothing. And it's been mm. a very long time since I've probably ever since I've just dove naked, no fins, no weight belt, no wetsuit, nothing. And I very quickly found out that if I farted a bunch, I could dive a lot better than if I held it in. <laughs> and I swear, <laughs> the thing I was like, because this happens, by the way, if you're a free diver, you go up and down, the pressure changes, you're like, oh, I got a little little rumbly tumbly. I'm just going to mm-hmm. out it goes and I feel better. Yep. But when you're in a wetsuit and you got a weight belt on and fins, you don't notice anything. And I noticed on Naked and Afraid. <laughs> That if I farted a bunch, I could actually dive better. And I was like, oh, I'm more comfortable. I can go down deeper. And um, yeah, <laughs> how that's many, how I know. And I, I had the physique know. of a manatee. So, you know, I, I, knew, I know this now. <laughs> how many times did it take? <laughs> yeah. Like how many farts were you able to push out back to back to back to back? 
I was living on potatoes. So, so many, many farts. <laughs> yeah. I, not to mention like there, there's not, this is getting into a lot of detail. There's no, not, great. it's not like a lot of, um, privacy when you're doing naked and afraid. So I was sure. aqueducing every time I went in the water, right? I'd be like, just go for a quick <laughs> swim, you know, just could get my laps in and just as soon as I got in the water. So, you know, that well, was, you know, Cause, Dude. cause they film, by the way, they film you taking a shit on naked and afraid. They're like, I, we film I was just going to say what we do. Yo, I, I'm actually curious Weird. about that. So like from your, from your perspective, having been on there, they film everything. Like it, what's going through your head? Like when you first get out there, like, Oh, I'm naked, whatever. We all saw you do the dance. I mean, you were very comfortable being naked, but what about like the taking a shit thing? I mean, it must've been on your mind. You're like, I'm just going to shit in the ocean or like, I'm going to do whatever. No, or were you like, Literally, like you know, I think I went a day or two without dropping a deuce because you know you get those get those jitters and you're not eating much and you know it's whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then I finally yeah. like took a deuce and, like this guy just comes with me with his fucking camera rolling on his shoulder rig and he's like, hey, man, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "What, what the fuck does it look like I'm doing? Like, oh, are you feeling good or feeling bad or how's your tum tum?" And I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here!" So <laughs> he's like, tum tum. Yeah, he didn't say. That. But I, I okay. literally took one in front of the camera and was like okay that's the last time i'm doing that like they could make this look disgustingly weird and bad um and so unless it was like the middle of the night when nobody was around which i don't think ever happened i was just going deuce in the ocean and i would watch my partner you know this uh this quite attractive lady just like walk over 150 feet and just start shitting and like she's growing a tail you know and this guy's sitting there rolling and they've got like the boom oh hanging over her I'm like nope this is not for me like rolling i don't know what tail Yikes. Ugh. I mean, if Nightmare. you're the kid, like the camera guys better get paid like an extra hundred bucks a day for that. I would hope so. <laughs> like, By the that's way, a none big of them, ask. They were, all, they were all like, I was like, okay, I'm going spear fishing. And they're like, oh, uh, we don't know how to free dive or swim. Or can you take this GoPro and wear it on your head? And I'm like, yeah, right. for sure. I just take the GoPro. And like, Click. Okay. <sighs> take a shit. <laughs> yeah. so I can really relax out there. <laughs> Let out some of those fucking Brutal. jungle potatoes yeah, so, gaseously. Anyway, that, was and... a, that was a big dog leg. But yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right. Um, what's number two, Peter? All right. Number two. Here we go. Uh, we talked about this animal last week. So I thought, Will thought it would be good to include this into the fact or fiction this week. Jellyfish have one hole, a cloaca, where they eat, reproduce, poop, and even hide their young in times cloaca. of danger. Cloaca. It's the same mm-hmm. thing your cat has. Cloaca. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't rhyme with mm-hmm. Chewbacca. Um, Listen, Forrest, keep your goddamn mouth shut. Pat, you're up first. True. A jellyfish has a cloaca. Mm, Forrest? Tr- have a cloaca. Is it true or is it a trick question? That sounds um, like a hint. Excrement. Uh, I'm going to go true. I, I can only imagine. No, let me think about a jellyfish's anatomy. Okay. Yeah, what I'm going to go think? true. I'm going to go true. Yeah, I'm going to go true. They have to get rid of their waste and they can't have, they're not very complex creatures. Guys, fortunately for you, you're wrong. It is false. Nobody gets a point. The score is still one to zero. Pat, you guys no, know nothing for, about jellyfish. For, one zero forest, huh? idiot. You utter buffoon. That's well, what I said, no? No, but anyway, what's number three? Now I'm really just curious how how um, jellyfish get rid of excrement. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, well, I'll dig into well, that on my of, own. Time. Of course, Maybe Peter if Pat doesn't wasn't know. watching a football game, he would be able to uh, Bro, chime in with Shut something other than just why looking at the television. So. I'm curious why you think he's doing that. Because I know him. I know he is. He's been watching That's it true. since he's we started. <laughs> a beer number three. A beer drinking goat was once elected mayor in Lajitas, Texas. Is this true or is this just some bullshit I made up? <laughs> so just real quick for us, they don't have any type of excretory organs. Oh, you Googled it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's kind of what I was trying to figure out. So they must just consume things and that's it. Like they're just waste just falls out. There's no excrement. It's oh, just sorry. energy. Nope. They, they, they do excrete waste, but it's through the same way that they eat through the mouth. Oh, Interesting. That's nice. Mm, that's that's no filthy. reproduction. No, no okay. reproduction. Was a goat elected mayor in Texas? <sighs> yes. True. Of course. Because it this type of be. news, it, it annoys me because it was like something cute that a town of 400 people did on like mm-hmm. July 4th. They were like, let's do a ceremonial goat election. Um, it's true, but it's fucking stupid. You, a goat cannot govern a town. <laughs> it cannot balance a budget. 
<laughs> they can't make decisions. I'm, a, I'm, I'm in 100% agreement with Patrick. Also, you're not yes, smart enough is. to make up that story. <laughs> that, what, that, that, what are you talking about? That, that is the easiest story I could ever make up. It's true. <laughs> yeah, but, no. but it is true. It yeah. is it is true. In in La Hitas, a town of about a hundred along the Rio Grande River near Big Bend National Park, a goat was uh was elected to be fucking governor of the state. Or May, the city. May, mayor. Mayor. So next, listen, I am definitely number too four, drunk please. to do this. Yeah, yeah, number you're, four, a little, please. you're a little sloppy. <laughs> no, I know. Here. All right. Number four, this will be the last one because I'm too drunk. Um, <laughs> leeches have 10 stomachs, 60 brains and 18 testicles. True or false? False. I think it's something like that, but the numbers have been manipulated. It's a good guess. Mm. I don't I really think they have 60 brains either. I think they have zero brains and they have 60 sets of fused ganglion would be my guess. Nice. Fused I'm going to go true because oh, that, I, I know that it's some weird number of organs and I'm just guessing that you were too lazy to change the numbers. Forrest, you are fortunately correct. You win. And it was, was true. What, too yeah, lazy to change true. the numbers. Yep. We'll call <laughs> that one a tie. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, that segment has nobody talking. Um, but here's one <laughs> that does. I think, Forrest, I'd love it if you'd do the intro here since I don't have a desk to pound on. You got it. Yep. Desk pounding coming right up. Battle Royale. I love it. God, that was powerful. That All was right. powerful. What this got, is Patrick? everyone's favorite segment. Uh, well, Forrest, you texted us an idea, and you like seemed that? really excited about it, and I, I don't like to disappoint you too often, so here's what we've got. Let's do it. You're going to take... It's a mythical creature battle royale. That's so right. what you're going to do is all of us have to create a new beast using elements of three... Mythical creatures, and they Love will it. then fight till death. Yes, classic battle royale. Good. It should be about classic. fighting. It should be. This is a classic okay. BR. No one's going to draft Bobby Flay. These have to be <laughs> mythical creatures. Uh, it is not. It is not. Or should we do a snake draft, or should we just go? Hey, you're you're I you tell you us, man. Do you're a, set the snake. I think you got to do a snake draft. draft for this one. All right, yeah. snake draft. I'm going to go first because I've got an okay. idea here that I'm pretty okay. happy about. Okay. My first – oh, and uh, the one caveat is drag. no dragons are allowed. No dragons. Smart. Yeah, that's smart. Okay. That's no a good fucking fire-breathing dragon. Yeah. That's just going to be – If you're just breathing fire, you win. So, yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call. Okay. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start out with a mythical creature that I find to be – Really, uh, just a fucking badass. I'm gonna start with a kraken. Ooh, unleash the kraken. <laughs> the body the of a kraken. Of the holiday season. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the yeah. body and the eight legs of a kraken, which is a, for those who don't know, a giant octopus back from dinosaur times that would fight with the megalodon and okay. sink ships. And the Viking explorers used to say that they the Kraken would come and bring entire ships down. I'm going to take in the whole body of the Kraken. Good. It's, it's really good. Yeah. It's very it, – it's good. It's it's good. It's, it's really big. good. I was going to yeah. go with, with old Nessie, Loch Ness Monster, but Nessie ain't got shit on the Kraken. You it's going to be so tough. That, yeah. yeah, there's it's no too way. Big. It's, a good, it's a good pick. All go right, ahead. who's up next? Forrest, you go next. Me? You go okay. next. Forrest, you're mm -hmm. next, yeah. All right. All right. I shall go next. Hmm. They're in West Virginia, and, and I believe a few other states. Florida has, or sorry, not Florida, Chicago, Illinois has some sightings of a supposed mythical creature that is humanoid in shape and has mm. wings known as Mothman. We ever heard of Mothman, either oh, of you yeah. guys? Very much mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Freaks. All right. Yep. I am going to go the cryptic flight powers of Mothman to lead it off. Mm -hmm. So does okay. he have the, does it, just the flight powers, not the body of the Mothman? Correct, correct. I'm still picking my, my body now that you took my water beast away from me. Okay. So I'm starting um, with flight power. It's a terrible ahead, pick. Peter. You're Moths up for two. fly right into heat and light. All I would do is hold up a lighter and you'd be dead if you were it's only the Mothman. So I'll wait till your next pick. <laughs> Okay. Uh, this Stop is a stalling. snake draft. I pick, I pick two, correct? Is yes. that right? 
He's okay. figuring my it out. My first He's pick. Figuring it out. My first pick is obviously a vampire, because hmm. a vampire a lives forever. It's eternal. They can fly as well, and I mean, as far as their attack skills, it's not it's not great. But I'm counting on both the <laughs> eternal living and then also the the ability to fly. So that's my first pick. Okay. My second pick and all is vampires fly. Huh? That I know of. And all I, what? vampires fly. I think he gets thing? most of his vampire knowledge from the Twilight series of books. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Where else would cover I get to it? Cover. <laughs> What's your okay. next one? Watch What's your the next movies. one? The <laughs> next, my next uh, power that I will give my creature that will win this battle royale because all he has to do is use his laser beam eyeball. I will be a cy- cyclops who shoots lasers out of his one eyeball, and all he has to do is shoot it in the air. The moth will fly right into it. Uh, so dumb. Shut up. Your vampire okay. cyclops so far. Okay. Okay. Yep. I don't think it's too bad. It sounds even more no, badass when you say it aloud. Cool, but saying that he's going to shoot a laser beam out of his singular eye into the atmosphere and Mothman, who, whose body you don't even know what it is yet. Right. Picked a really or brain. brain. Only or the brain. power of flight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. All right. What do you got All right. for us? Vampire Cyclops, pretty solid. Um, so don't, don't forget, I've got the cryptic nature and flight powers of Mothman, but mm. I figured out body of my creature it's the hades hound you know the three-headed dog from the hercules movies the hellhound oh, yeah. yeah yeah the hellhound big, hell big three heads that's uh mm-hmm. that's that's the base that i'm going on the hellhound but, but so, with moth powers as the head wait so it's the powers what you have to have some so physical body attribute body. Of- yeah, but just, just relax here okay, okay. i'm talking about yeah. that this is the, the general so right now what i have is because i've got a third pick still Right now what I have is a hellhound that has the flight and disappearing powers of Mothman. The disappearing powers is worrisome. Okay. Mm-hmm. That, Got it. Okay. Like, super cryptic and can fly. So its physical right. form is the hellhound, the three-headed Correct. dog. Okay, that's, that's good. I don't know how well it's going to do in the water. <laughs> I don't either. So I've got a kraken, which is the size mm-hmm. of a school bus. Yeah. It has eight legs. <laughs> good. And can swim. <laughs> I'm going to okay. then give it a second power of another mythical creature. I'm sticking with my water theme of the mermaid. Because what the mm. mermaid does is they sing a song. And the, the song, siren, the yeah, siren very, song, very it woos you into a trance-like state. So picture this kraken singing a song that makes your creatures just go into a trance-like <laughs> state. And then it immediately grabs them and brings them to the bottom of the ocean and kills them. So, very good. Because I'm so confident I've now won, uh, my third power <laughs> is going to be, because I've already won, now my third power is going to be one that I can then take advantage of after I've won. So I'm going to go with another mythical creature, a little short, about one and a half foot tall, it has red hair, it's Irish, Ooh, leprechaun. the leprechaun. Very nice. Because the leprechaun what? What? has access to many pots of gold. <laughs> You so know, it, no. it's always about the money, dude. Come on. It's clever what he's doing here. He's got a he's got a he's betting he's betting a lot on his big water beast, and then he's rich if he wins, or even <laughs> if he doesn't win. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, but, but he's dead if he loses. He's dead. Uh, no, okay. I'm still recording a podcast. My creature's dead. Yeah. <laughs> and I have the gold. Okay. All right, Forrest. Well, how are you gonna finish off dead, your mate. flying, disappearing, three headed pit bull? Giant dog. Yeah. Oh boy. Mm. I think, man, man, you guys have some good picks. I'm trying to think. Here's the thing: I had some ideas, but they're not going to win in a fight with either of your guys. I mean, I think I got, I think That's I right. got Peter's vampire yeah. cyclops taken care of, but your kraken mermaid leprechaun is a beast. No. Yeah, the, 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 um, the vampire you, cyclops is a shit show. No way. No way. <laughs> he pooped his pants on this one. <laughs> are you, are you guys out of your mind? Okay, go on. I, I'll wait till my turn. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. It's really good. I'm stalling because I'm trying to think of something good here. Um, oh my god! <laughs> You've got a disappearing three-headed pit bull that can also yeah. fly. I mean, it's a pretty good start. <laughs> pretty solid. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty solid. I'm going to add is, to that. Is. I'm going to add to that one ability, which is going to be the ability that is going to keep me safe from your water creature. 
which is that of the shaggy coating and snow abilities of the Yeti. So that my flying, my flying hellhound beast that can disappear and reappear can go and live way up in the Himalayas, up in the Arctic, in the Antarctic, where no matter where you call me from with your Kraken mermaid, it will be too cold for your aquatic creature to come to my zone, and there okay. perhaps I stand a chance. So, so basically, because you know you can't beat mine, even though it's a mandated battle, you've just chosen <laughs> avoidance. Well, <laughs> so yours is a pacifist. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's a very peaceful hellhound. It's, <laughs> it's a flyy, hidey, cold hellhound. I like what you did there. <laughs> okay, I'm accepting the truth at this point. So, so basically, what you have is, I everyone's avoiding my creature. I just got really, mm-hmm. really rich. Forrest has the mm-hmm. coolest pet ever, but he <laughs> needs to get a bunch of like mountain hardware gear so he can go hang out with it. <laughs> See it. Mm-hmm. And then okay. Peter just well, created himself a humanoid friend with one eye. <laughs> he protects two lasers out of his one eye. Are you sure. done? What else? Can I go now? Yeah. Okay. Go. <laughs> go ahead, so, Top Knot. <laughs> yeah. First of all, your leprechaun, I don't know if you've ever seen the movies. All you have to do is throw shoes at them, and they can't fucking not shine them. Uh, it's ridiculous. The Kraken, I'm just fucking pissed because you stole my goddamn fucking mermaid, which was going to be my next fucking thing. Yeah, but you wanted a mermaid uh, so you could fuck it. You did. Let's be honest. No, I, I didn't. And, and you, I didn't. It's weird because you wanted the upper half of a fish. <laughs> as, you know, like an earth mermaid. <laughs> no, my creature, yeah. which is now a fucking, it's, it's a vampire that lives eternally, flies and shoots a laser out of its one giant eye, so a giant big laser. It it needed an aquatic ability. Okay, so, so what is it? Uh, I'm not going to be able to do... Shut the fuck up. That's what it is. Just be quiet for one moment, okay? I listened to you go on your diatribe Look. about your bullshit, your gold, your money, all of it. Dude, so, so My, far your creature is top notch. <laughs> <laughs> so, Forrest said it right at the beginning. It will be the Loch Ness Monster because my creature needs to also be fucking huge and be able to go underwater to destroy your piece of shit, short Irish fucking Kraken. Okay. So it will be underwater. It will be living eternally. It will be shooting giant lasers out of its one giant oh, wait, eye. And hold Forest on. Will be nowhere yeah, yeah. near any Keep of our animals. Your animal though. Does it have the body of the Loch Ness monster or does it have the body of a vampire Cyclops? Or is no, it, it has the Ness body Ma- of the Loch Ness. It has the body of the Loch Ness. So he's what he's done is he's taken all of the elements from each of his three things. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. voters what are you will talking keep, about? She'll keep that in mind. The only when they extra vote. element that I've taken. All right, so I'll pick one from the vampire, and that's flying. I'll take away his ability to live eternally, because fuck you. It doesn't matter. All he has is this laser sip, this eye that shoots lasers. He is a giant fucking sea monster. And he fucking flies. So eat okay, my so dick, well, Pat. You, your leprechaun well, your sucks. Creatures are battling in the water. No matter who wins, and it's very defeated and beat up after this fight, my, my Yeti mm-hmm. hellhound will come out of the snowy mountains and just use <laughs> one of its heads to fish it out of the water. And then, fish just, it. you know, yeah, just, <laughs> just be close to shore. Mothman <laughs> wings. Um, I think okay. that's a good plan. Uh, how do people, how do people weigh in on this? I mean, we need the community to, to sort of tell us who who won this one. Peter, where do they go? go? Everybody can go to iTunes, but really just go to the wild times podcast forward slash info. You can find all the links. It it, is the link to the iTunes, the YouTube. You can comment on the YouTube, wherever the hell you want. Talk to us, send us an Instagram message. Let me know that I won. Also, uh, the merch is up. People are loving it so far. No? No merch? It, it, no, no I, merch People is up. People are loving it, dude. People are loving it, dude. I, I threw up the blobfish spirit animal tank on my uh, yeah. on my Instagram stories. No joke, 20 to 30, I didn't count them, different DMs being like, dude, that thing is fucking sick. I need one of those to work out, which is pretty cool because I never yeah. thought of it. If you walk up to the gym in a my spirit animal, <laughs> is that hideous blobfish in a tank? Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's, God, that's pretty funny. Like, it really is. Like, it's it's a great gym. Yep. Also, by the way, it's that time of year. Great gift. Mm, if you oh have, yeah. like, a meathead in your family that, like, just needs to be taken down a peg, order him a My Spirit <laughs> Animal tank to wear to the yeah, gym. Yeah. Yeah, Call him a blob. Or someone yeah. who just needs some motivation to lose weight. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you have a fat mom at home. Buy her one. She'll love it. <laughs> she will <Yeah>. love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how so do people find good. the merch? How do people find the merch, Peter? So you can find the merch at that link I just said before, or if you want to go direct to it, just the wild times podcast.com forward slash merch. Seems Sweet. Leave it. I would also love it if some people would leave some reviews on iTunes. Cause our, our reviews, we, we know we're getting a lot of downloads. We know people are enjoying the pod, but we haven't had as many reviews lately on iTunes. And here's what I'm going to do. Peter pays for the merch. So the best mm. review, the, the, the most creative, fun review, you're gonna win a free, you're gonna win a free piece of merch. I don't know what it is yet. It's a tank or a t-shirt, mm-hmm. whatever. You're gonna win it yep. if you go on iTunes, leave us a five star review and mm-hmm. uh, and a fun comment. We'll pick you at random next week and send you a tank or a t-shirt. And that's how- and you'll get a blowjob from Pat's mom. Good night. Mm. Why would you say that? That's so rude. Ugh. <laughs> oh, he's mad. Awful. What an awful, like awful, awful young man you are. All right, you guys. All right, good guys. Good night. Good night, everybody.